to Tribe Church. How y'all doing this morning? Man, that's good. I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you, everybody who's joining us online as well. I know there's many people who uh, can't be here on Sunday morning, so they join us online. Thank you for doing that. You are here for our brand new series for the new year called Uphill Habits. And it really is just about starting the year with Uphill Habits. Because one of the things that we do, we are what we repeatedly do, right? I think it was maybe Aristotle who said that. I didn't bother to look it up, but I remember the quote. <laughs> we are what we repeatedly do. Isn't that true? That is who we are. We are who, what we repeatedly do. And then we form habits, and then our habits form us, right? Mm -hmm. The habits that we take on, they end up forming who we are. They end up being who we are as people. Um, and what do most of us end up doing, right? Not the things that we're supposed to do. We end up taking on habits and things that we shouldn't be doing. So the, one of the things you saw right there in the video that we talk about is most people have uphill hopes and downhill habits. Like your hopes are, this is how it's gonna go, it's gonna be a new year, I'm gonna live my life like this, but our habits are actually going downhill, right? Like we don't actually live that out. We have the uphill hopes, but downhill habits. And the thing is, is that hope is not a strategy. I don't know if you know that or not. Hope is not a strategy. We need something more than hope to see life change, right? We have to take action. We have to take the right steps. We all want to see that life change in our lives, right? We all want to see the things that are different, but sometimes we don't take the necessary steps to do that. Are you with me so far? Yep. All right, come stick with me here. All right. We don't take the necessary steps to do that, and we, we want that to try. People want life change in a day, right? Like, um, I tell people this, if you give us one year of your life here at Tribe, give us one year of your life, I promise you, I can almost guarantee you, your life will be better. Amen. Your life will be better. You will be in a new, t yeah, all right, yeah, all right, good. Woo. Some of you are getting it this morning. Your life will be better. If you give us one year of your life, your life will be better at the end of that year because you're not giving your one year to us, you're giving it to God, Amen. and we will make sure that you do so. So see what God can do with one year. Just see what God can do with one year. And what we're talking about today, I will, I will just be honest with you before we get started, what we're talking about today isn't necessarily easy, right? It's not necessarily, if it was, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, mm -hmm. right? It's true. Everybody would uh, look fit, look healthy, be making the right choices, you know, killing it all the time. You know why they're not? Because it's hard, mm -hmm. right? And also what we do is we have uphill hopes and downhill habits, like, right? We hope for the best, but we don't take steps to change that. So we're gonna talk about that today. What does that look, uh, look like, right? And downhill habits happen because they're easy. Right? Like the things that we do kind of naturally, badly, is because they're easy. It's easy to eat a whole bag of chips, at least it is for me. It's, e <laughs> it's easy to do those things that are so much fun, right? But don't actually take you in the right steps and direction. So God's calling up for us is difficult and challenging, but worth it, right? God's calling for our lives, right? To stop having downhill habits, but instead have, uh, or instead of downhill hopes, have, or, man. I knew I was going to mess that up. Instead of, so instead of down, uh, uphill hopes and downhill habits, we'll have uphill habits and downhill hopes. No, that doesn't sound good either. <laughs> Our lives will be better because we'll stop doing what we're doing. Everybody get that? Okay. But it takes deliberate intentionality. It takes deliberate intentionality because if left to our own devices, we do not do the things that we should do. We take the downhill route every time because it's just, you know, it's easy, right? But hear me with this. Everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything worthwhile is uphill. Say it with me. Everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything worthwhile is uphill. That's true. Everything worthwhile is uphill. It's an uphill battle. And that may be challenging, but the good news is today that God is going to help you. The good news is today that God is going to help you on that journey, that you are not alone on these. If you take these steps, if you take these steps, God will help you. He will help you in that path. Uh, and today and over the next four weeks, we are going to go over some God habits or principles, right, that if applied to our lives, our lives will change. Our lives will change. Our lives will be better. And I challenge you, get rid of that excuse that is already floating around in your head. Because I know some of you right now, you're like, mm, I can't do it. I don't even know what he's going to say, but I know I can't do it. <laughs> I'm telling you, get rid of that excuse right now. Because I know people sit there and they're like, oh, well, I'm not going to try anything this year because I am who I am and that's the way that it is. <laughs> that's all of your internal voices right there. It's a spot on impression. I am who I am and it is what it is. <laughs> that's your internal voice. Uh, but don't be like that, right? So don't already start making excuses, right? Start saying to yourself, yes, this year will be different. Last year doesn't matter. This year I'm going to change my life. This year I'm going to follow God. And I promise you it will happen, okay? I promise you that right now. 
So you're going to need three things if you're going to take this journey with all of us, take this journey with me. You're going to need three things. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need hope for the future. Hope for the future. Um, hope for your future specifically, okay? Hope for your future specifically. Some, some of you are hopeless when you came in today. Some of you are hopeless. My marriage can't be fixed, right? My finances are beyond repair. My emotions are in tatters, and I cannot replace them. No, you need to have hope, right? Hope is not a strategy, but hope is a plan, okay? So make sure we, we stick with that. You gotta have hope, gotta have hope, have to have hope. The phrase that many of you need to hear today, and I've heard this a lot, and you've probably heard other pastors say it, but when I say it, it's gonna hit you so much better because I'm really good at it, right? <laughs> but God. But God, there's so much in the Bible, right? Like there's like this, 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 it's all falling apart. But God, but God, and then things start getting better, right? Yeah. The story, I, I, many of you are probably familiar with this, uh, the story of the woman at the well, right? The disciples have gone to run an errand for like food or whatever. And it's one of the few times that Jesus is like by himself. He's by himself and he's thirsty, so he goes to a well. This is for those who don't know the story. So he asked the woman uh, to draw some water for him because he's thirsty. And she's surprised that he's talking to her, and she's surprised for a multitude of reasons. So, first of all, she's a woman. What? Right, and women were not <laughs> supposed to be, you know, like, this is a guy alone talking to a woman, not supposed to happen, right? Also, he's a Jew, and she's a Samaritan, right? So there's this, they're not supposed to be conversing, right? But he's, he opens up to her, he's like, you know, I'm thirsty, would you give me some water? And then he even strikes up a conversation. He asks her, he's like, hey, so are you married? Are you married? She tells him, no, I don't have a husband. And he tells her, oh, you've had five husbands, and actually, you're with the, uh, the sixth guy right now who's not actually your husband. Like, he just tells her, like, hey, this is the truth. This is the truth, right? So listen to what he does because, um, listen to what he does for her. Because if he does it for this woman, right, if he does it for this woman, he can do it for you, okay? Jesus answered, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh living water. He tells... <laughs> He tells her that she would be asking for the drink. And that, not only that, but that drink of water would bring life change to her. That drink of water would change everything that she knew. And I want to tell you something today. If you only knew, if you only knew the generosity of God and who he is, if you only knew the story of some people in this room, this very room, and the life change that has already happened, that is continuing to happen as a result of what, is God, what God is doing here, you would have hope for the future. Amen. If you would have hope for the future, if you only knew how God is already moving in our midst already. And let me preach. Let me preach here for a second. I don't know if I haven't been preaching yet, but now I'm going to preach. If you only knew the generosity of God, and more importantly, who he is. That's right. You would be begging him for a drink of water because it's the only thing that's going to make a difference in your life. That's right. And that is the only hope that any of us have. That is the only hope that any of us have. If you only knew, and that's what he tells her, if you only knew the generosity of God and who I am. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. I know we see this all the time, and I think it's misquoted a lot, so I'm going to give you some of the context here. This was written while Israel was in exile as slaves, right? Some of you are slaves today already, but you're slaves in a different way. You are still slaves, though. And what he's telling them is you have hope for a future. Make sure you're willing to give this a chance. Make sure you're willing to give what we're talking about today a good try. All right, so what else are we going to need? Repentance from the past. Repentance from the past. Repentance is a scary word. I think it is. So because I hear this a lot, and people take it to mean like you're going to fall on your face and weeping and wailing, right? Like that's repentance. It's like, oh my. I'm so, so. Right? That's repentance, but that's not the word. That is not the word. The, that's, uh, the word means I'm going in this direction, and then I turned and I went in this direction. Right? I'm going to correct my course from the way that I'm going, and I'm going to go this way. It means to turn, right? I'm going to go here, and now I'm going over here. That's repentance. That's what it means. There's an illustration that's often used in a recovery program. If you've ever been in a recovery program, I'm not going to raise your hand. I'm asking you to raise your hand. But if you've ever been in a recovery program, this is the thing that they share. And I really love this. And I really think it applies not just to people in recovery. It applies to all of us. It applies to everyone. It's called My Life in Five Chapters. My Life in Five Chapters. Chapter one. I went on a walk and I fell into a deep, dark hole. And it took me a long time to get out. Mm. Chapter 
too. I went on a walk and I fell into that same deep dark hole and it took me a long time to get out, right? Chapter three, I went on a walk and I saw that deep dark hole and I looked down and I got a little too close to the edge and I fell in and it took me a long time to get out. Step four, I went for a walk, I saw the deep dark hole and this time I just went around it. Chapter five, I went a different way. Amen. Right? Chapter five, I went a different way. And some of you are living in those first four chapters. Some of you today are living in those four, four, first four chapters. You keep falling, and you keep falling in, and you're like, man, I've been there for a while, and then I get out, and you know what I do? I do it again, right? Because we have downhill habits. That's what we're talking about. And some of you, I think specifically, are in chapter four, walking amongst all the holes all the time. I'm trying not to fall in any of these holes, and then we don't understand why it's so hard. It's because you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. And if you stop going where all the holes are, and if you just turn, turn, you'll go down a whole different path, right? That's right. You miss all those holes. You miss all those problems because you've turned and gone a different way. Philippians 3.13 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul is moving away from the holes and forgetting about the life that he used to live and moving towards the prize that God has for him. Right? That's what he tells us. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself taking a hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Head. Straining towards what is ahead. And the last thing is we need a formation of uphill habits. Formation of uphill habits. So Romans 12, 2 says, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. A lot of people want to change from the outside in. They're like, oh, I'm going to change my appearance. I'm going to dress the right way. I'm going to look the right way. And therefore, I'll be different. No, you will not. You have to change from the inside out. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Well-formed maturity in you. So that's, what does that say right there? Unlike the culture around you, all this nonsense around you, if you're focused on God, God will bring out a well-formed, mature person out of you from the inside out, right? Not by the things that you do, but how you accept and love him. It's not about like if we do the right things, then God's going to love us, right? God loves us despite the fact that we don't do the right things. We understand that, right? That's yep. a big principle here. Yep. It's not what we do, but it's a response. What we do is a response to how we love God and how he loves us. And what a great time it is right now, right, to set a new goal. The next year we won't even, like next year at this time, we won't even recognize you because you'll be a brand new person. We'll confuse you with Jesus. We're like, who is that? Is that Jesus? <laughs> is that Jesus? Because they look so, they do so much like him. Right? Next year at this time, we won't even recognize you. It's such a great time to set this out, right? So habit number one. Habit number one. Focus on what I do first. Focus on what I do first. If there's a principle that runs throughout the Bible, it's the principle of priority. Right? What do I do first? In fact, um, I, can t I can tell more about you by what Right? If I look things that you do first, I'll be more about you than probably anything else. First thing, show some things about us, and they actually have power. The things that we do first. Here are the three ways to do the right things first. Okay. What are the right most important? You see what I did there? <laughs> Put the right thing first. Later. Right. This is the first because it's the this is the only thing that's gonna the only thing that's gonna make any God first. So then this this may hurt some people's but it's the truth and I feel that people, especially Christians, up on. If God but he's not first in your life. If God is in your life, and he is not first in your life. Have God as part of your life, he will God's going to take. And he has the right to do that. He has the right to do that because he his first. He always models. God always models what he expects. 
that you're a priority in by giving you the only son that I have. He is my my only son. I give him to you because I want to make sure you're a priority. My firstborn and all. Right? If service is not going to growth track, serving on here on the go team or anything. Christianity is reordering your so that God is in first place. That's what it is. Christianity is God in first place in your life. What does it say in Genesis 1 1? In the beginning, He's first. He's first. I understand I'm taking context, but I want you to remember this. There because remember this in the beginning, God. So when you think about your life, right? When you think about the next, you think priorities. I want you to remember in the beginning, God. First, in Exodus one through three, it says, "In God's these words, I am the who brought you out of Egypt, land of slavery. You shall before me." So what does he do there, right? I showed you that you're a priority for me first. God models what he does. What he wants. Who got you out of Egypt, the land of slavery? Telling them right there. He doesn't mind if you love. He minds if you love something else more than. Him. Mm -hmm. right. You can love other things, but you can't love other things more than him, right? If God's not number one in your life at all. True. Number two, give God the first everything. Give God everything. And I know so many people are like, talk about money. <laughs> <laughs> this, this kind of bugs this kind of bugs me because time preachers use this kind of term money out of people so that they can and accomplish their vision. The motivation is pure. Right? I think the intentions are pure. um Okay? I don't think it's money. Money is on the list, but it's important. So I'll give you money is definitely on the list. important. And I don't even think that the tithe, honestly, uh, taught right. We, as a budgeting, um, as a giving principle, so that uh, projects can be, and I don't even think that's what it is. Leviticus 27 says, a tithe of everything, whether grain from the trees or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. I don't just need a tithe. I need a tithe of your thoughts. I need a tithe of you say of everything that you are going to give me. That's right. Right there, like a tithe of. Right? I just need your money. I need your thoughts of your. You use your time every. 23 says. Much good, but developing church and giving them can be so important. But not the purpose it's the area that we tie the right. So, this correctly. Don't be wrong, like, what's going to keep these doors, but just being clear with you that. Is Amen. It is to remind us that we, when, whenever we do anything in our life, it is to that fact. And so it's not so that, like a church, not so that these things can happen. That God in your life. And if you're not putting it, it doesn't happen. Right? Alright, so what if we do to give God what we did first we give him the of my year twenty for a fasting because right our life church is the first of the year it's the first of the So let me give you like the 
the teaching that is happening. First of all, let me just say this. It y'all can tough it out. Second of all, what did we just talk about, right? Our year to be we get down into the we've been having, we will live differently. And the way that we live our life is by doing different things. Okay? Success in this next year, guess what? Right. Probably isn't working. One day is prayer and fasting. The complete fast, right? And I, and I've noticed it's crazy, but it's really really hard. Just juice or juice for 21 days. So let me make sure you talk because I don't know all circumstances. I don't know all your don't make a poor decision. Don't be a hero. Think of other ways that you can be part of it. Also a selective fast. That means certain food, diet. Maybe you'll stop for 21 days, right? Chocolate for 20 days. I'm going to try to do what's called the which is like no meat, no sweet, for 21 days. In fact, it's in the Bible. You um, Fast, partial fast, but you're not eating all the time. A meal, maybe you sun up to sundown. That's like like fast from sun up. I'm gonna skip a meal every day. Full fast, right? A lot of people don't think of it. focus uh, on like what in your mind, right? So get rid of media, right? I'm not gonna. Uh, you're gonna go through withdrawal. Me just, met. you know what I mean, like. Like, take away my phone. What did I do? Um, for 21 days, right? You're, gonna, you're not gonna, uh, going to have to do 21 days. Is the purpose, like, so when you think about this, the purpose of this, we normally do this, you're focusing on God. You're developing godly. Starting your year off first, and then putting God first. Because a lot of you will, good message, I really I was like, what are you fasting? You're like, <laughs> my life's going to be different. It will not. You have to stop doing what So that starts tomorrow. We're even going to like, it's like, I mean, the um, right, you can start anytime this week. Tomorrow, I'm hoping that we all can do it together. for uh, The next thing you do is the month, right? The way that you can do this is through like schedule. Budgeting, right? Schedule all the time because we don't want to out. Don't put God out of your and all the things that you're going to plan time for Him. That is things for God. Spouse, like if you're married, make sure that on date nights don't put everything away. Okay, away and your first fruits to God. I'll tell you this to like both part of what you know. A a part-time salary basically we tribe. I take a part-time salary. We get that money and then we send that right back to tribe. So, money. What we do with our do with our thoughts matters. It matters, and you have thanks for that. The my week. Congrats today, right? <laughs> your week right now because you're here. And you know the early church, they moved the Saturday, Sabbath, Sunday celebration for two reasons. Sunday decided to not give God, but to begin the week. You're going to give God our first. And what would your church for Sundays? You know it would be better. You know that. You know that. And Sunday Right? It's meant to be a Sabbath. You are and you are rest. So don't give God just an hour. On. Give him the whole day on Sunday. We take it every single Sunday, right? Because it's a day, a day for God, but rest, right? Take a walk, take a meal, in and I promise you this, you've done more in sick days than you will in seven. You in six days.
God than you will in seven with your own. Right? But it doesn't do that. Living that out. You also have the first of your day. You're like, that's hard. Like, I, I wait. Get out the door in time. If you have just say this day that the Lord has made, rejoice and be glad. Do you have time? 10 seconds in the morning? Yeah. How busy you are. You have time for 10 seconds. Just say to yourself, and be glad in it. Before we check our phone, before we check, <laughs> one of the things that we we have an Alexa at our house, we have it set so, you know, uh, uh, start my day. And the first thing, rise and shine. And it says that because that song makes me give God the glory. glory. That's a song. But I do know that song. <laughs> and shine and give God every day I start my day turn her on and then that's what the first I say give God the glory, glory. I do that every and I do, ideally in the morning you make a quiet ideally you make and you I do that anytime yeah. about giving your there's something special to your day to God I mean, 15 minutes of your day for a whole year. That's pretty tough, right? But we're talking about uphill habits. Right? Not downhill habits, uphill habits. And guess what? Uphill habits and they're tough for a reason because they will make they're tough because at the end of it. Because everything worthwhile is uphill. Right. Worthwhile is uphill. Having uh, the first 15 five minutes in the word, five minutes in worship. Five minutes studying the Bible, five minutes of worship, five minutes in prayer. The last thing is, that's the principle first. When you give God the first year, he multiplies your time. When you give God the finances, he multiplies your finances. When you give God the first year, he multiplies your time. Like there's this whole thing called gospel, which is basically saying, like, you give all this money, then God's going to give a ton of money. That is not what I'm promising. Sure you is not what I'm promising you. What I you know is that when you give God the he'll bless you, though. As you expect, in many ways that you prepared, but God will bless you. And I know there's multiple people who can share with you, when they started, they started giving their time, they started other things in their life, how use that to bless their life, use that to change them. All your ways, in all your ways, first fruits of all your crops, arms will be filled, and your vats will be filled with new wine. When we give God the first everything, God will multiply. You want your life to be, you have to do. If you want your life to be, you have to do different things. Say it again. If you want to be different, do different things. If you want to have a closer relationship with God, you have to take steps. With God, you can't just you can't just say He's my Lord, acting like He's your Lord. You can't just I follow Jesus without putting it in place, because He will not. He will. Not anything else. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you are and all that you do for every single one. For everyone in here, God, that this will be here for them. That they will stop doing and doing, God. Turn from the things they're doing, God, and turn towards Lord, we know that you're the only thing that can bring about life change. We know that our relationship with you is the only thing that's going to bring our life. God, people coming to church, Lord, you growth track with us. There is people that are go team, people who are leading on the We know that the only reason that makes a difference is because they put you in your life. The 
things that we do, God, it's our you. God, it is my prayer that everyone in 2019 declaring complete dependence on you. Because for a lot of people, know that God is somewhere in your life, number one. God is or he's not all of it at all. Be the first thing that we think of, the first thing, the first thing that we follow. Put God in first place. To put God in first place, living the world, falling into that deep God and start following your return. And if that's you here today, I don't want to forward, I don't want to give you the mic. There's something weird about it. I just want you to be bold enough today, today in 20. I am going to give my life, give my all to you. I just want to pray with you. If that's you, raise up your hand high so that we can pray. Just put your hand high. Yes, I see you. I see you right here. I see you right back in the back. I see you in the back row. Let's pray together. God, I am thankful for your life. God, thank you so much that you gave you by sending them. sins. I know that your son Start walking. Our cold's got, but I'm going to go with Because right now, God, I am, and I am turning towards you. And I know that you, your life change, your road leads to a different life. God, I promise I will not go back. Today, I'm declaring you my I'm in the first place. Giving you the first of my year and the rest of my days. As in your name. Amen. We love to celebrate when people. People right. Grateful for that. We will not take that. Something. I thank you so much for that. The time every single week we're an offering. We're not going to bring about like that. We do have a giving statement up front. You can uh, an offering in there. We also you can online. There's a you can. This is your first time at church. Or maybe you've just been kind of coming, trying to find out what's going on here. to give. We do not want. We do not want something from you for you. The relationship that we want for you is. Jesus Christ and a life-giving church. That is what we want. Okay, so please feel no other. You will see some people give home. This is their home. Here and they want to help invest. When we invest, life change happens. Life change happens. Um, and, and God is today in our midst. I'm so, so grateful for that. So. Whether you raised, whether you raised your hand, or you were just thinking about it, it can be different. Please come back, hear more about how hear more about a lot of change. Thank you so much for today, God. For everybody who made decisions, I pray that God not just raise their hand. I made a lot of decision today to. We know that when we first to you like God and I am so grateful for those people today who gave their not just today to their days God that apply that and you will grow that fruitful God it's like there's not another time we come we know that you can move which can happen great things can occur God because God, that they will not just have another day, God, but 
promise everything.